Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today in this video I'm going to check the Q3X VTX from Wolfwoop. In this video I'm going to go over its specifications, measure its output strength and then head outdoors and test it out. Inside the small bag we get a Wolfwoop Q3X VTX, an AM6 to an SMA antenna adapter and the instructions manual. So now let's have a look on the VTX itself. First of all it supports 37 channels in order to comply with FCC rules. In addition, it supports smart audio in bit mode and has a selectable output strength of 25, 200, 600, and 1000 millivolt. On the top, we can find an AM6 antenna connector and on the bottom, all the relevant connectors. So over here, we have the battery plus, the walking voltage is between seven to 26 volts. Then we've got the ground, plus five volts out, ground, video in, and then the smart audio pad. Over here, we've got a microphone, which is nice. And on the back, we can find a micro SD slots. So yes, it also double acts as a DVR and the maximum support cards are 32 gigabytes. Just like all the rest of the VTX DVRs, you will have to stop the video recording by using this button. Otherwise, your last video is not going to be saved. And it also splits the videos into five minutes chunks. In terms of dimensions, the Q3X weighs 10.2 grams, including the wires which comes already pre-soldered and about 9.1 grams without them. Over here we can find 30.5 by 30.5 mounting holes, so it's going to be easy for you to mount it on top of your stack. And its outer dimensions are about 38 by 35.9 by 6.7 millimeters. So now I've got the VTX powered up. First of all, over here we can find this red LED indicator that is going to indicate if the DVR is recording or not. After pressing it, you see it's going to flash, which means that now the DVR is recording and you have to make sure to stop the recording before disconnecting your battery. Otherwise, as I mentioned before, your video is not going to be saved. So after pressing it, this red LED indicator will be constantly on, which means that now it stopped the recording. The DVR is not going to auto start after plugging in the battery. So you have to remember to start the video recording. Over here we can find the VTX configuration button. The preferred way of course is to use smart audio, but you can also use this button. Short pressing it is going to change between the channels. Over here we can find this LED indicator that is going to indicate the channel. When this LED indicator is red solid, it means that it's on channel one. So let's go back to channel one. And now you can see it's constantly on, which means it's on channel one. And after pressing it, now it's on channel two. So you have to count the number of times in order to make sure that you are on the correct channel. Switching between the bands is done by long pressing this button for about two seconds. And then the blue LED indicator is going to indicate your band. So the left one is band one. Then we've got two, three, four, and five. And you have to refer to the frequency table in order to select your favorite band and channel. Setting up the output strength is done by long pressing this button again for three seconds and this VTX doesn't come locked so you don't have to go through any special procedure in order to unlock it. So in order to set the output strength you will need to long press this button for four seconds. And now you could see that this red LED indicator flashed which means that now we can select the output strength and when the red LED indicator is constantly on it means that it's on 25 milliwatt. After pressing it once now it's on 200 milliwatt. Now it's on 600 milliwatt and now it's on 1000 milliwatt. After pressing it again, it's back to be constantly on, which means that now it's 25 milliwatt again. Now let's measure the output strength. First of all, when it's set to 25 milliwatt, I'm getting about 11 milliwatts. When it's set to 200 milliwatts, I'm getting about 245 milliwatts. When it's set to 600 milliwatts, I'm getting about 550 milliwatts. And finally, when it's set to one watt, I'm getting about 850 milliwatts. Now I'm going to let it run for about a minute and let's see what will be the measured output strength and also the temperature of the VTX. So after about a minute, now the output strength is about 700 milliwatts. Let's check the temperature. In my experience, the hottest temperature is measured next to the antenna. So let's see. So the temperature is about 51 degrees Celsius or 124.1 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's run it for another minute and see what happens. So the output strength after about another minute is still about 700 milliwatts. And now it got a little bit hotter. So now it's 63.8 degrees Celsius or 146.8 degrees Fahrenheit. The next thing that I'm going to do is to mount the Q3X on my Ishin Wizard TS215 and head outdoors and test it out. 
I hope you will enjoy the rest of this video. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to ask it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notification bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.